Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another week of Radio Melee. As you might have noticed, my head is a lot bigger than normal. That's because I'm using a MacBook. We don't have a PC sponsor, do we? No, we don't have a PC sponsor. I'm using a MacBook webcam. Uh, whatever, this is the best advertisement a PC sponsor could get anyway, is the scuffed quality of my MacBook deal right now. But I just moved into a new place. My PC isn't set up yet. Um, haven't had time to set my PC up yet. Uh, so, you know, what you see in here is what you get. We brought on special guest, my old roommate, and uh, one of my favorite players of all time, uh, Kalamazoo. Good to have you. How you feeling, Kyle? Good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hell yeah. And uh, of course, you know, as usual, we got PP, and all three of us will be taking your questions live on air, which means that if you're in chat, all you got to do is uh, type in exclamation mark radio melee. You can join the Discord server and ask us whatever the hell you want, um, because uh you know it's just it's we we literally are just gonna like if people have good questions um of course if you've got anything specifically for kalamazoo then you can ask him if you've got anything for all of us to answer or any hot takes you want us to react to it's really easy you just click on that link from exclamation mark radio melee hop in the submit topics here channel uh and ask us whatever you want yeah and uh i mean Keizu, of course, Peach player, part of the Peach revolution. A lot of the Peaches have been doing a lot better lately. You guys could ask about that. Or mm -hmm. something else that you're interested in. Uh, but I think first, um, and this is something I've been interested in asking you about ever since I've heard Toph talk about it the first time, but he's brought it up <laughs> a few times, Kalamazoo. So I'd like to ask you. Um, I remember hearing... Uh, Tov say that you you were very enamored with Armada's playstyle. You still re you really liked it. You've done a lot to bring that forward and and bring his solutions forward. Do you still find everything is applicable now? Do you still really like it as much? And and have and what kind of adjustments have you had to make in the modern day, uh, if any? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Um, I guess like back when Armada played, I'd kind of like study him religiously, like. Mm. As you know, uh, Peach Main should. Uh, I mean, everything he did was like so, like miles, like miles beyond like um, every other Peach. So there's no reason to not just kind of blindly copy everything uh, he did. Um, I, I mean, but honestly, like once he retired, uh, once he retired, and even before he retired, I found that like I kind of found like myself uh just blindly like just blindly like doing trying to do exactly what he did mm -hmm. like without like finding my own style i think since then i've like made like way more improvements than when i like watched like a lot of armada videos um i've kind of like developed a little bit more of my own style i think mm -hmm. um and that that's helped me a lot yeah so what you're saying is it almost sounds like you're saying it wasn't really about um, what our motto was doing and whether it was right or wrong, but because you were doing it without trying to maybe put your own spin on things or or you unquestion you unquestioningly accepted it or things like that. You didn't bring out your own strengths and weaknesses, and then that that held you back. And then you're once you were able to, I guess by force maybe, but once you were able to move past that, it really helped, huh? Yeah, ab absolutely. Like I think. Uh... I mean, there are a lot of things to uh, like that good players do that are just like good, like a lot of the flow charts, a lot of like the punishes, uh, the the neutral even. Um, but I do think like melee is like so comp complex and uh, so fast that you kind of like need to, you know, un like you kind of need to like understand the all the situations yourself and mm. kind of review your own vods like do a lot of introspection that um you know no one you know no one's gonna like really pave the way for you you gotta like kind of do it yourself right. it's so like a big you, thing i learned i think yeah so now it almost sounds like that uh your own vods are what you watch the most do you find that to be true or do you still see yourself watching a lot of the other peaches or does it vary uh, i think it varies now um I do watch a lot of my own stuff. Uh, at least, like at least a year ago or so, I, I would I would like watch a lot of my own stuff. I I really should more now, but uh, you know, I'm I'm not I'm like a little lazier. I'm mean, Slippy makes that soup. 
Slippy makes that super easy. Uh, the, like the vods are already there, so you can kind of just like dive in. Right. Um, I now I am kind of watching a lot of the other pages because uh, mm. all of us have like such different styles. I think, like for example, like I I like play like a grounded like dash dance neutral game, whereas like Polish like mm -hmm. you know kind of like stays in the air and like mm -hmm. plays on the platform like camps the platform like his words not mine like mm -hmm. <laughs> like really really well um so i, I kind of like wanted to like bring that style um a little bit uh into my own gameplay yeah cool. so yeah you think that like you know because i kind of had this thought recently like um especially watching like polish versus law you, you versus polish it feels like there's way more variants in peach styles now than there were in the past like when our motto, maybe maybe that's just because you know if you watch a tournament back in the day, 2015, you, you know 2016 that era, you're so much more likely to be watching our motto. And these days, it feels like there's more of like a more variance. Yeah, I, you're you're right on the dot. I think like nowadays you see like so many. Um, nowadays you see like well before like I think a lot of the peaches did copy our did like copy like armada like me or like at least watch a lot of armada vods but now you see like peaches rocking like the green like the green skin mm -hmm. and i think they're like watching like a lot of lod and like a lot of polish and you know that i i i can see it in their play they're like hyper floating all over the place um like she'll drop like she'll drop like double jump float like random mm -hmm. shit like that i don't do so yeah like you can totally see it. You can see it on unranked. I'm like, I'm like playing Fo Fox a lot now, and I'm like uh -huh. in the like, I'm in like the, I'm in like the intermediate chat like for like the Smash like Discord, and like I see these these peaches like they don't know how to like dash dance like they don't know how to chain grab but they can like hyper float towards you and like <laughs> and mess you up. Uh, so it's a different era. For so it's the, new wave. <laughs> it's like the new wave of those foxes who the meme back in the day was like, man, these foxes, they know how to double shine, but they don't know how to up throw up air. So it's like that, but with Peach. <laughs> Dude, it's totally a new like, wave. Like, wow. all, all you see on Twitter are like uh, crazy like Peach uh, clips, right? Oh, shit. Yeah. Did I? No, it wasn't just... on you. You're good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, you just see all these like crazy, uh, crazy Peach clips on Twitter, right? Like from Ralvi, and I think that's like, I think that's influenced a lot of like peaches to uh, mm. adopt that kind of style. Chase that clout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you, uh, you know what the, you know, it's funny you mentioned this and how you feel like, well, okay. I remember when I was watching like the first set where I was watching of yours and I was like, Oh damn. I was like, I was really kind of come a long way or what have you was when I saw you play that set with HBox. I think it was an online set, but I remember back in the day, I actually wanted to ask you about this specifically, is I remember back in the day I would talk to you, and I would talk to other, our other good friend, Prince, A Prince Abu, and both of you guys basically told me, which is funny because it's from both perspectives, you guys both told me, oh yeah, Peach Puff is like, you know, it's, 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 it's not winnable, there's nothing really more that the Peaches can even be doing, but then, you know, obviously the match is still bad, but then, you know, fast forward to like 2020, 2021, and I'm watching you play HBox, and I was like, oh damn, Kyle never used to do any of this stuff against Puff. Um, and, and it was like, you know, just a, a much more competitive set than I, I think it ever would, would have been like back in the day. Um, has that matchup, is that one of the matchups that you feel like has gotten innovated on a lot lately or what's, what's the deal with Peach Puff in your mind? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, you, you got me Toph. Like I will admit, I will admit like that I did like that. I, I was wrong. I'll be the bigger man. Uh, I do think I do think Peach Puff is not as bad. Like, cause I used to say it was like hundred zero, like literally unwinnable. Yeah, but, you say hundred um, zero. I was like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I I've been I like I have gotten a lot better at it. Like playing like Prince Abu, like literally for like a few weeks um, when I was back in oh, Michigan, damn. and like and like yeah, there like there are like things that Peach can do um, back to Puff, and like. I, I'm not even like good at the matchup. I don't think. I think like, mm -hmm. I think like uh, the other peaches are like um, a lot better at it too. So I, I I do think there's, I do think there's room there that like uh, I guess like Armada didn't 
really go like in that yeah. matchup. Like, yeah. Yeah. I guess he never had a reason example? to. Yeah, for example, I think there's a so I had like a really hard time like getting around Jigglypuff back at right. So like mm -hmm. um so none of your moves like really beat it, but you can grab a turnip. Right, and then you throw it at throw it at her, but then right, and then throw it throw at her, but then sorry, I, I'm getting a uh, getting so an echo. We're getting feedback. No, that was yeah, that was my fault. Sorry. That's, oh, no, you're again, good. I'm using a new setup, and it's just being weird sometimes. But I think I fixed it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So Jigglypuff of back air, unbeatable for Peach. Uh, you, you grab a turnip, um, and then like what Jigglypuff usually does when you grab a turnip, they go like really high because you can't like. You can't like throw the turnip like be beyond your uh like above your full hop height very easily because the turn goes down after you throw it. So they like would like double jump and then like um and then like they go down like a, with the nair or something. And that's like really hard to beat for Peach um with the turnip because like all your throw options like lose to nair. Like nair goes through turnip. Um so uh I mean, I didn't think of like I didn't think of this until like I guess like semi recently. But you can actually like do aerials while holding a turnip. So I think a lot of the aerials while holding turnip um, really opens up a lot of the options because like the back hit of Nair cleanly beats out uh, their Nair like pretty like pretty reliably. So does up air. Oh. Um, so yeah. So I think like holding turnip like and doing aerials like really opens up like different options and you can still throw the turnip if they're like not going super high um so that's kind of like that was kind of like my main strategy against hbox and it worked out pretty well cool well thank you for sharing that with us um yeah. i'm sure people are going to have more questions about matchups that have changed and things like that that's a that's certainly a good one to talk about because that one has changed so dramatically over the years at least in terms of results and the way it looks so um but anyway, before we get these callers in, we have one more thing we got to do, and that is look at the community voice. Look at what the good people on YouTube yes. said about our question Toph and I offered, mainly Toph, offered last week. And the question Well, I, I stole it from our caller, so cuz our <laughs> caller gave it to us and I was like, "Well, let's just let's just prepackage that and, and give it to everybody." Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so let's take a look. Uh, the question was you know, what features would we like to see implemented in Slippy? And we were talking about some of it, um, but yeah, I mean, I was looking through the comments and there were so many community voices on this one. I think people really wanted mm. to talk about this. Yeah, which is awesome. I mean, it's cool that there are so many different ideas from the community, but uh, okay, so one six, oh man, Nick, Nico Neeks is like a million suggestions. Okay, tag mm -hmm. team mode, two players with two stocks. Two players with two stocks each versus another two players with two stocks each. Oh, so... If you taunt it, swaps the player's percent in stock. So it's like a, it's like Marvel. It's like you can tag in and out. Oh, that's kind of mm. tight. That's actually a pretty cool idea. And then uh, imagine if there was even a way to work in assists. King of the Hill, lobby system where winner stays. Mm. Okay, that kind of sounds like, I, I mean, even like Smash Ultimate, I think the lobby mode kind of works that way. Yeah. Unranked doubles. An actual, yeah, sure, an actual integrated doubles mode instead of kind of the, the, the cheating, you know, where you kind of cheated with the uh, uh, direct connect teams. Mm -hmm. Local two player for online doubles would be a better connection uh, for two v two with only two connect. Ah, okay, local two player. I see. I've actually wanted to do that uh, before. I actually think this was back when I lived with Kyle. I remember uh, it was like Cactuar and Reno or somebody hit us up. They're like, "Yo, hey, you want to play like doubles?" And I was like, "Wait, can we do that?" Yeah, it was a weird moment. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, uh, well, okay, free for all is just a thing, but I guess there's no way to play it online, huh? And headquarters, you get points by holding a spot on the stage. The location could rotate every 30 seconds. Whoever has more points wins after, say, four minutes. It's funny because I know uh, the, the, the most recent season of Fall Guys actually has that, where there's like a there's like an area on the stage. It's like illuminated by light, and you try to, like, it's like a pillar of light. You can knock people out of it. So that actually could be kind of fun. And then it does move, you know? Imagine that on, like, Rainbow Cruise or, or, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, Big Blue or something. That might be kind of cool. That'd be neat, yeah. Sounds yeah, like an anti like it sounds like an anti like ledge camping set. <laughs> yeah, camping. yeah, it's, it's very it's anti ledge camping. To, it's to learn how to play on the stage mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, CV, if there's a way to make Slimmy immune from Nintendo canceling it. Yeah, if there is, that's that sounds like a, a legal a legal feature, if anything. Yeah. Um, and St. Vong saying, you know, some modern games with a small newsletter box on their main menu. Oh, you know what's funny is I think this is... Um, I hope I'm not leaking anything. I think this is actually... I think Fizzy's actually said this on Twitter before, so... I don't think I'm leaking anything, but uh, Fizzy apparently uh, wants to do this. Um, yeah. And there's already like that slippy, you know, there's the slippy launcher that you can use to start the game. And mm -hmm. I think that there's actually a plan to kind of roll in, uh, you know, advertising tournaments or whatever. Well, you That's know, what, whatever, whatever, uh, you know, you can kind of imagine. I always thought that was cool because I remember back in the day when I would, you know, I, I played Overwatch back in the day and it was cool to see. Uh, you know, you'd when you're booting the game, there's the launcher thing, and it would say like, "Oh, here's the streamer of the week." You know, you can go <laughs> check out their stream, or uh, here's some real events that are coming up. You know, so it's kind of, it's kind of nice to have that because we have so many. Obviously, on Slippy, there's so many players. Like, I feel like there's thousands of people. I, I mean, I, I don't know what the number is, but there's so many thousands of people that are playing Slippy every day, and it's like if we could take that and like direct them somehow to. Some kind of community avenues that would be that would be really sick. Yeah, so I think I, I've, I've always thought that was a cool idea. Yeah, I love that. And then the other part of that person's suggestion that you were actually talking about was displaying the number of active people. I we've talked about how you know there are so many people playing. I'd love to know how many people are in the region I'm in. How many people are just playing overall? Um, we, I mean, the, the maps that went around a while ago too were just neat because we got to get some more information on all those places. So seeing mm. that would be wonderful, I think. Yeah, shout outs to Etos. Etos loves maps. He does. Uh, and I know he's here because I see him in the uh, Submit Topics here channel, which I will remind uh, people out there, everybody out there, uh, especially if you've never dialed in before, but even if you have, you know, we love, you know, last week there were a lot of questions that, and this happens every single week, there's always questions that we can't get to. Uh, very rare that we can get to all of uh, the, the the people asking questions, but um, if you were here last week and we didn't get to your question, you can ask. Absolutely, you can ask the same question uh, again. And you know, I I do take a look to see who's asking what questions, and we do try to flag people who have kind of tried to to dial in uh, more than one week, and we do try to give them a little bit of priority. So mm -hmm. don't be shy. You know, exclamation mark radio melee. Come by the Discord server. And uh, and talk to us. And you know, with that in mind, uh, we've got some call. We've got some uh, some questions. Or I am very close to the camera today. Yes, we've got some uh, some 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 people who want to dial in already. I think it's about time to get our first caller. Mm -hmm. uh, so, without further ado, welcome to the show. Does that say Ponner Nine Honor? I don't know if I'm supposed to pronounce the nine or not. I would like I would like clarification <laughs> on this as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. It's, it's loud yeah. and clear. Yeah, it's it's nine honor. Uh, I've been in both your guys' chats, and I like you guys always always take a swing at it. And I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I've Love said it both take ways a swing. so many times, and I I still don't really know. But what's up, nine honor? Welcome to the stream. Where are you calling in from? What's your question for us today? Uh, I'm calling in from uh, northeastern Kansas. Um, cool. And my question is: so I'm an educator, uh, and I work with a ton of different people who don't really see value in video games uh, and things like that. Um, and so I was wondering what your guys' thoughts were on things like essentially life lessons you guys have learned from playing Melee that have been beneficial to your life outside of the game. Man. It's a big one. That is a good question. Um, right off the bat, I will just say that, and I'll probably think of a better answer, but even if nothing else, I will say that a lot of Maybe not from Melee itself, but I've definitely learned a lot from the community. So if nothing else, right. I've met a lot of really interesting and diverse and uh, really, really smart people through the community that have, like, like Scar, for example, uh, uh, like Mango, believe it or not, um, who I do think I've learned a lot uh, about life from. Uh, so if nothing else, I think the community has definitely taught me a lot. Um, and 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 Kyle wouldn't have met Kyle without Super Smash Brothers Melee. That's right. <laughs> what, what do you think, you, Kyle? Yeah, what do you got for us, Kazu? I um no, totally agree. I like totally wouldn't have met like some of my best friends if it weren't for Smash. Mm -hmm. Um, the game itself, like I spent like so many like it's like un an uncountable number of hours playing Melee, right and. I think I needed to in order to get 
at like a compet at like a level like I am now like pretty high level. So I think I don't. I guess like what I want to say is like I don't take for granted like um the hard work it takes to get like to accomplish something. Um, yeah. So like. I know, like, if I wanted to get, get, like, really good at, like, let's say, like, tennis, but I don't play a lot of tennis, I'm not going to be mad about, like, the results I didn't put in the work to do. Um, so I, I think I have, like, you know, like, uh, uh, a better perspective in, like, you know, what it takes to, you know, really get good at something, I guess. It takes a lot of effort. It really does. Um, I think... To piggyback off that a little bit, I think something that um, Leffen and others have talked about, too, is when you are trying to work really hard at something, you often have to narrow your focus, exclude so many other things to keep working at it. It can be a a very full-time thing in a lot of ways. So your appreciation of the work can go into so many aspects, so many areas. Um, And and once you learn to do that, yeah, you can apply that type of improvement process to a lot of things. Um, For myself, I think if there is one thing that I use almost every time I talk about the game and and it's really just changed so much for me, um, one thing that it's really changed, especially since I became a top player, is to think about um, how the way you feel impacts everything the way you think and feel impacts everything and so you know like some people will get really distressed before an event and why is that And some people will get excited for an event why is that and some people can handle last stuck situations but a lot of people struggle there um why why is this in-game thing a roadblock like why do you struggle with someone playing defense but why does this other person struggle with someone overwhelming them and pushing buttons on them but they can play def- a defensive person fine all of these sorts of things i've seen so many examples of how it works with what you need to learn as a person or what what you're already comfortable with and and, and all of that and, I, and and it's such a beautiful process and experience to me to have seen that to see that in other people and, um, yeah, I'm just really glad that that Melee gave me the opportunity to learn more about how people work and how, you know, how so much more is asked, how you all, I almost like saying how you ask more of yourself, the better you get. And I think, I think it's really wonderful. And so I, that for me, that the, basically your emotions and the way you are that impact your game, I think it has to be it for me. And I think that's just melee is such a good, does such a good job of letting you express yourself that it really comes out. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Uh, Casey, what you're saying, uh, you know, in the biz, we call that a growth mindset. Um, But I love that. I appreciate you guys taking the time to answer my question. Um, Personally, I just feel like video games have such value, whether, you know, you learn big words to them or whether you learn more about yourself. I think, I think it's so important. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to answer that. You're very you know, awesome. it's, it's funny too, uh, just as an addendum or like a, uh, like an add on here. I also think that I just learned a lot, not just from melee, but just from gaming in general. Like as like a kid, I remember how, um, I got really invested into like reading and I think it helped my like reading comprehension, like my vocabulary and stuff a lot when I um, got really into playing like RPGs that were like very story driven. So I don't know, I see a lot of different app, maybe applications is the word of different avenues where, you know, gaming can kind of influence how somebody um, is brought up. And I, I definitely, at least, at least in myself, I, I do think there was a lot, like a pretty strong correlation with like the kind of things that I was interested in and like the games I was playing. Um, uh, and, and yeah, I don't know. I always think that kind of thing is kind of, kind of fascinating yeah Uh, also to add like uh, like beyond like the side benefits i think gaming makes us all happy so yeah that's good enough for me (laughs) that's true that is true that is true it's the classic thing right people you know it's a game why you have to be mad etc etc but the other side of the i love that i was just thinking about that clip the other day by the way (laughs) 
you know, the, the thing to me is the other side of the coin is instead of using that to troll someone, it's a good reminder that this this can be really fun. And that can be challenging, especially as you invest more into it. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, I mean, I'm remember, I'm thinking back to what Cody was talking about, what IBDW was talking about after his summit win, where he had so much fun with the game and he stopped letting himself get really frustrated with everything, stopped letting things snowball if he made a small technical mistake. And things got better, um, you know, massive, massive help. And so I, I think back to that and my own experiences and the experiences of other people, whether it's coaching or just listening and seeing what happens. But yeah, when you when you have fun with it, uh, it's it's a good time. I thought of one other thing Melee has taught me that I think has really been powerful, uh, which is that I think Melee really taught me that different people have different paths to success. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, uh, well, like, you know, you think about, like, Mango, and you think Mango about... Mango is Mango's a really King. good example. Yeah, exa- exactly. Mango's, like, you know, somebody who, you know, is, is playing at the highest level and kind of defies a lot of the rules about, like, what you kind of think a pro gamer is supposed to be like or what have you, right? And um, Or even how they practice. Even how they practice, exactly. And, uh, and I know that... Um, this is the case in obviously a lot of different pursuits, but I think it's really crystal clear with Melee. Like, and it's not just Mango either. I mean, I think there's a lot of different people that function very, very differently uh, that are all achieving. I mean, like Nun is a really good example. I remember back in the day when Nun was coming up and everyone in Canada was like, dude, you got to stop playing like that. You know, you're giving away free stocks. Like, why are you, you know, like, why, why are you going off stage there and doing all this, this crazy nonsense? But it worked and he got to like a top 10 level. Mm -hmm. uh basically you know just doing what he doing what he does um and so it's uh i think that's been actually a really it's really good to have that because i think you hear a lot in pop culture and in um media and things like oh you know everybody does things differently but i think it it sounds kind of trite it sounds kind of like you know it sounds kind of like hokey hokey or whatever um so I think it's really good to see it uh, in action. And it's also humbling in a way because you have to realize that even if you think you deserve, like, you know, if you sit there and you say, like, oh, you know, I'm so good at the things that I do. Like, why am I not placing better in tournaments or what have you? Why am I, you know, losing to people who I think I should be, um, who I think I should be better than or what have you because I have a, uh, you know, because I, I, I put a lot of, faith in my own practice regimen or something. It's like, you know, you have to like be ready to reevaluate and step outside the box and like kind of, yeah, I think there's a lot of really interesting lessons there um, that, that you, and, I, and I'm sure you can learn these lessons from a lot of different forms of competition. Um, but, you know, Melee being a 1v1 game, uh, y- y- it, it feels very direct. And, and I think that's a, been a pretty powerful lesson for me. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks uh, for... Uh, I love that so much. You got any shout-outs for us today on your way out, Nine Honor? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll just shout-out the uh, Top City Melee crew, uh, all, the, all the homies I play with, and uh, all the ones who have moved away but are still hanging out. I uh, appreciate it. Um, yeah. and just If there's anybody else in Northeastern Kansas, find me in Discord, and uh, we'll get some games in. Northeastern Kansas, you heard them. <laughs> Northeastern Kansas. I don't know much about Kansas, but uh, shout out to Kansas. Also, our first Kansas right? caller, I believe. No way. <laughs> Dark Rain's from Kansas, yeah. Yeah, ask anybody. Yeah. We're all like, hey, Dark Rain was great. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. You always have that. Jace, Dark Rain's right, buddy. Right. Yeah, right. there you go. Yeah, and well, then shout out to Bobby Kansas. Made, Bobby made top 100 a few uh, years ago, but you know. Who? No shade, no shade. Bobby Frizz. Oh, yeah. Oh, see from oh, Kansas? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Uh, people say Bobby. I don't even know who they're talking about right. anymore. Back, back, yeah. back in my day, that meant Bobby Scar, but right. there's so I'm many the, Bobbies. Time's to change. <laughs> yeah. And right. I don't know where any of them are from. I don't know where Bobby Big Balls is from. I don't know where Bobby Frizz is from. <laughs> very fair. It's very, well, very confusing. Nine on. Right. Thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Bye. See ya. See ya. Later. Yeah, good to get some uh, Kansas rep. Eventually, we'll hit all 50 states. The last one's definitely going to be North Dakota because, as it turns out, there's still zero, <laughs> me- zero melee players we or gotta, sets played. 
We got to we got to get hit the streets in North Dakota. We got to advertise or something. That's man. crazy. Zero? Yeah, we, zero. We got to say there was zero Smash GG sets played through 2020 and 2021 in North Dakota. It's the only state that has zero I think zero Smash GG users. I don't know. It's like it's dead. Smash, North Dakota is just just I think it's just, it's just dead. Maybe they're underground. They're just playing off Smash GG, man. They're on TO still. That's got to be it. <laughs> That's got to be it. Um, we got another caller here, looks like. Yeah. But I also do not know how to say their name. Welcome to the show, though. Where are you calling in from? And uh, how do I pronounce your name? Uh, so my name's just Sam. This is my Discord name. And my friend beside me is Aiden. And we're from Lancaster, Ohio. Yeah. Very nice. Ohio. Sam and Aiden. What's Sam and Aiden. Aiden. What's uh what's your question? What are your questions? What, so, what's your one question for us today? Uh my friend wants to learn how to beat Mars Fair or any move using Falco. But but like I hear a lot online. I hear lasers are main like the main way to help beat his fair. That's what I've heard, you know. But mm. I'm wondering like is there like a better approach just for Falco besides lasers at all, or is there just anything that beats it, you know, coming from you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Dude, so, this is this so is a story, by the way. <laughs> this is our first what? dual question. This is so. Yeah. Is one of can I just can we start? Or is one of you a Falco and one of you is Marth? Is that what's going on yeah, here? Me and or... him are both. Me and him both play Mars and Falco. Yeah. He oh played... my god! Interesting. Yeah. I was originally a Bowser main actually, but but that's just because I like Bowser. And yeah. I was originally a Pikachu man. Ah. Wow. Wow. You, guys, you guys you guys have decided you're ready to get some some dubs, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I went to Mars first and he went to Falco first. So like mm. Mars is secondary and Falco's my secondary. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, so beating Mars fair with Falco Kalamazoo, what do you think, man? Uh I mean, this is a this seems like a question suited for you, but I'll go first. Um, yeah, yeah definitely. Now. Like lasers go right through Marth's sword, so you can kind of just like avoid it and laser him, and then maybe he gets out of the air, and then he like he like fair in the air, and then you punish like the fair landing. I don't know. That's kind of like the that's kind of like the twenty twenty two like meta game. I see. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I mean. So like Mars Fair will probably be like all your moves like if it's spaced, mm -hmm. but the thing about Mars is that like all like all his aerials or like at least most of his aerials are like out there for a second, and then yeah. like they're gone and then he's in like a bunch of lag. Mm -hmm. So you kind of really? like yeah. So like so you kind of like there's like an early late late mix up that he does like he'll either do like early fair or he'll do like late fair. And then yeah. if he does like early fair, you can like whiff punish it after. And then if he does late fair, um, he's like vulnerable before he does the mm -hmm. late fair. Um, so I re recommend you like explore those, uh, explore that mix up a little bit. Actually, I've, uh, I've, I've, when I was playing, when I first started getting into Marth, I actually was like noticing, like, are you guys talking about like uh, short hops? Like when he's shooting out the fair, like you can shoot it out earlier or later as he's yeah. coming down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that too. I was noticing he was kind of vulnerable through that. So that's actually, now that you say that, like, I actually, that makes a lot of sense, you know? Yeah. And uh, I mean, the other thing uh, Kalamazoo was talking about, pretty helpful as well. Where you're spaced is important. If uh, this is a mistake that Falcos have made for a long time, and I assume it will continue to happen, but they will often attack from too far away. And if you attack from too far away, then, you know, a lot of moves that you might be able to beat, you're not going to be able to. So you want to make oh. sure that you're close enough to where you could really beat the move out. And you usually want to use Nair. Usually you want to use Falco's Nair to beat forward air, because if you use down air, you're going to push Marth into the ground, and at low percent, he's uh, not going to get knocked down, and then he's going to be able to grab before you can do anything, or at least shield. Oh. And yeah. then uh, if, he, if it is a knockdown, then he could tech, and then Falco's tech chasing... It, it can be challenging to do, so Nair is just going to give you a better follow-up a lot of the time. So I'd recommend going with Nair if you really if you really call him out and, and his percent's really high and you think you can get a follow-up, then you could go for a forward air, but Nair is going to be pretty consistent. All right. Yeah, I, that, that, that's, uh, I was wondering if Nair would help too because, you know, he kind of just stuck out there. He's not like, yeah. you know, 
he's not like, you know, kind of like you have to force it on him like a down air or like a reverse back air or just a back air in general, you know? Yeah, and so the the tricky thing about beating Marth's forward air is Marth could drift backward. You could be in the right space, but if Marth jumps backward, it's tough. Uh, oh, yeah. Another thing is, um, you know, if you're close, you, you pretty much have to be in a space to almost get hit or get hit by forward air to beat it. So that means that you're playing like a mix up game, not just uh, you're not you're playing a mix up game around which one he's going to throw out. Does he do you think he's going to just throw it out automatically when you're close? And if so, then you want to dash back and then punish the early fair, you know, and then if you call him out, then you go for the mid or late uh, nair. Then you could call out his late forward air, as uh, KZ was talking about. So there it's it's actually a kind of complicated position. Uh, but again, to take the main takeaways are be closer to him, uh, use Nair and, um, look to see if he's doing an early or late forward air. All right. I get what you're saying. So just like, you kind of like just poke him with the Nair more often, basically when you're really close to him and stuff and keep wary of him backing up and stuff midair. Yeah. And, um, you want to make sure I almost wouldn't even say you're poking him with the Nair. I mean, this is a. This is a full send. You're going in and you're trying to start a combo. So you, oh. you really want to get him. All right. Yeah, Falco, Falco does, doesn't have that luxury of, uh, you know, like a lot of the other top tiers, they've got such good ground speed and side to side speed that yeah. they can kind of hedge their approaches in that sense. But I feel like with Falco, like, he's so slow side to side that if you're going to go in, you got to go in. <laughs> you got to really go in. Um, yeah, and w- one thing you can do too, if you're fighting the Marth, you know, I mean, you specifically asked about the forder, but if they're like, if they're really not fordering, if they're really on the ground and they're just like dashing, 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 and um, you know, right. like, damn, how do I? Well, how do I approach that? You can always just approach with the laser, you know, because a lot of the time they're looking to dash dance grab you when you do an, a down air or an air, and if yeah. you just do a laser instead, you know, a lot of the time you can kind of throw a wrench in that. So it's always this question of like. Is the Mars staying on the ground, or are they going into the air? And then you got answers for both, but you got to be, like, really quick on the uptake of, like, what's the Marth currently doing, you know? Yeah, so you got to watch him, keep an eye on him constantly. You never know what he's up to. He's a schemer. Oh, yeah. He, he definitely plays like that. That's for sure. <laughs> very, he, he's very scheming, that's for sure. Yeah, well, the character will do that hey, to you. Yeah, he's a schemer. <laughs> yeah, Falco's definitely not, definitely not along them lines. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think we've, I think with the help of Kalamazoo, we figured out how to play some Falco Marth today. Um, hey, Kalamazoo is an ex Marth main. I don't know if people know this about him. I, 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 I was, I was. It was, it was like short lived, but you know that Marth. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was like a t- it was a tough year for me. Was that was, was that because month. of was Puff? Fine. Was the Marth for Puff? Uh, no, it was just. Uh... It was just like I was in a phase where like uh, like Peach is like unviable piece of shit and uh, <laughs> this like, was like right I, after like, Mata started playing Fox like, like you like can I like can't continue this because Armada switching exactly Armada Armada switching off Peach for like every matchup now mm. like it was just Puff before but now it's like Fox and Sheik and like everyone like I'm like okay yeah. I, I see I see where this trend is going right. so I'll, I'll, I'll stay ahead of the curve. Right. Okay. But then, right. but then it curved back around. It curved back around. It it uh it was tough. It was tough. <laughs> Melee always curves. Melee is, finds a way to curve back around. Yeah, yeah. well somehow. Uh, Sam and Aiden, thank you so much for calling in today. Do either one of you or both of you have any shout outs for us on your way out? I don't. Um uh, I don't, but Thank you, man, for helping me with my Falco. But all you guys, thank you for helping me with the Falco. Marth, Ditto. Well, not Ditto, but sorry, Marth and, Marth and Falco matchup. Hey, no worries. No worries. Glad we could all help out. And I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Best you luck too. to the both of you. Me too, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you. See you. <laughs> Somehow I thought all people named Aiden played Sheik. I know two people named Aiden, and they both play Sheik. I've met my first Aiden that doesn't play Sheik today. And well, for that, they yeah. might be looping around to that now. We'll see. That's true. That's true. Uh, all right. Well, next, I think our call, we've got a, a, you know, a friend of mine and a friend of the show, Sword CR, a.k.a. Chad SW, a.k.a. No SW, a.k.a. Ben SW's mm. brother, a.k.a. Octet. What's up, Noah? How are you doing today? And what's your question? How's it going? 
Um, yeah. Well, uh, I had a little thought the other day, and I, mm. I asked some people in Those another... Those are dangerous. I know. Uh, us Falcon Mains aren't supposed to, to think. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, I asked in another Melee Discord, and it led to a pretty interesting conversation, argument, almost. Um, but I was wondering how you think the tier list of, of characters, and maybe even the Melee scene overall would change if Shine had a longer lockout before you could jump. So How long? I was thinking long enough to be reactable. You could still combo off of it. Maybe you couldn't wave Shine as easily, but just so it was punishable. So maybe 14 frame. Mm. I don't know if you could punish off that. Yeah, it'd be a useless move. Um, so assuming... You know, this would be this would be a big nerf to spaces. I'm curious how you think it would warp uh, uh, the scene or the tier list. This would make spaces. This kind of reminds me of Powder Toast Man in NASB, <laughs> which is a character who's who has a shine move that you can kind of combo off of, but you quickly realize playing that game that it's really bad on shield because if you do it on shield, you're actually minus. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, I guess we'd probably have to pick a number. I think with the 14 frame lockout, I don't think Fox could. I think Falco could probably still combo off his. The people in SDI away, he can't. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I don't think Fox would be able to follow up. But I'm assuming your question is more like, okay, if functionally you can't, if if functionally you can't, if it was punishable, but you could still combo off of it. Yeah, I think functionally, okay. like that sounds like what you're kind of going for. Yeah, the idea is that. It's not the default move that you can go to every time you you whiff uh, an aerial or or an approach because yeah, I, there's some. It's weird because if 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 we take away you know if we take away the safety of it, then I think we also take away the the ability to punish with it. Mm -hmm. uh, the hypothetical mm -hmm. is very weird. It, we, I feel like we're just kind of ignoring a lot of the rules. Of the game and how a lot of the other moves work, although Shine does break a lot of rules, so I understand. It does. It does. Um, you know, I wonder if, um, geez, well, uh, like, is the question the like when, if you can, like, if you can, like, question, shield grab it? The, the question it, is basically, can you, can you react to it and and punish it? Um, like, there's there's a lockout before you can jump. So, basically, if you see a Shine. Um, a lot of people get frustrated because spaces can just throw it out safely, especially like out of a tech chase or something, for example, and then mm -hmm. they could jump away and they don't even have to know if they're right. Maybe they can still punish off of it, stuff like that. And the question is basically something like, well, what if they, they, if they want to shine fine, they can still do it. It still comes out frame one, but they have like a lockout for several frames where they can't just jump out of it right away. That way you could react and punish it if you saw it coming. Is there a lockout right now? Like the jump um, squat, the jump squat after it, but jump so, squat, like, can, can you shine frame uh, one and then jump frame two? Is that how no, works? there's well, someone said, oh God, it's frame three that you can jump. Sure. So okay. there's a little bit of a gotcha. window, but it's, it's gotcha. tiny. My gut tells me that Fox would be fine, but he would have to play a lot lamer because like, obviously you don't have this shine to like bail you out. If you're like, you know, kind of approaching in a way that's like, oh, this might be unsafe. But I think Fox would still be good, but you probably would have to play a little more defensive, aka can't be. I don't know how Falco would be. I feel like Falco takes a big hit there. I, I don't know. I feel yeah. like Falco kind of needs to, he kind of needs his shine to, you know what I mean? Like you go in with like, imagine you're like, you're lasering into somebody because um, you're calling their dash back, but like they put up their shield instead. And with the way the game currently is, you know, you can take that and at least convert it into shield pressure. But in this hypothetical, I feel like a lot of that time now, you're actually in some trouble. Um, so I feel like Fal Falco takes quite a big hit. He just, what do you think, he, BB? He can, like, it, and now, I think the question that is more being asked is about what if they tech chase or what if they do it after they mm. move the neutral. I think that's more what the question is. But in terms of what you're talking about, yeah, I mean... He has no ability to close range pressure anymore. All he can really do is space pressure, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, and in some ways, I kind of think we're, you know, we kind of move in that direction a little bit in certain matchups. And in some matchups, I think it's just better than being on their shield anyway. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, to be forced to do that, it's like, 
if someone's at zero, you know, it's going to be really hard. You, you down air is not a great move on shield already. And if you space it at zero, you're not getting anything. Even if you do like a late one, probably like you down air and then what you grab because they can shield and then, <laughs> you know, Falco's grab. So yeah, kind of like, all right, well, that's cool. And so I, I do think it's going to affect him. I mean, will yeah. Falco still be able to space out Pikachu? Yeah. Will he still be yeah. able to Pikachu pretty well? Yeah. <laughs> You know, like it's going to affect him. It's going to affect him against characters. Assuming we take all the, we, we apply the shine changes to everything. It's going to affect him a lot against the characters that he needs to combo harder. Like, you know, a lot of the stronger characters. It's going to make, I guess, uh, it will even up the Falcon matchup more. Because um, now out of tech chase, he doesn't get the shine as easily. He can still, you know, buffer spot dodge or buffer roll. Um, but I don't think Falcon minds that nearly as much as he minds getting shined and punished into death um i think this makes chic really hard because now combo <laughs> really yeah hard. shield pressuring really hard uh which is it's already really hard but then there's that and then um then you have the getting out of the tech chase yeah which is, you know, that's a good Sheik's example already incredible at it so i you know there's a lot of examples like that where i think falco you know he he needs all he can get against some characters and I, maybe he even still beats them with the shiny way he is now but if you take that away i think he he really starts struggling. He already can, you know, get thrown off. And if he loses his double jump, I mean, that's it for him already. And so uh, an interesting thing to think about, actually, is the shine stall off stage. Because I was just thinking <sighs> about getting back throw sh or um, back thrown by Sheik by the edge. You want to shine stall. Well, now you go <laughs> before you can do anything. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, kind of tough. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to make it even up... easier to gimp them. It's true. Sometimes you end up shine stalling for long enough that, you know, you end up often shine stalling for longer than 14 frames, but I'm thinking at those right, low percents, right. if they can just kind of get you before you can even do anything and you lose your mix up. Yeah, that'd be bad. You know, it's funny because I had this observation. We were doing this B button challenge last week, right. uh, yourself included PP, where we had to beat people on unranked with only using B moves. And it was funny because Sheik was actually the one matchup where I was, I, it, Sheik made me realize I actually in some ways kind of need all of my tools, which sounds kind of Who funny. Who did you play as? I was trying to do it as Fox. Um, and Sheik was the one. The kills? Oh, maybe. I mean, so Spacey's, you can shine Gimp. Um, Marth, you can shine Gimp. Falcon, of course. Falcon was the one that I eventually cracked. Um, Sheik, if you shine her off stage and then she poofs onto the stage, your punish is like another shine. So it's like, well, that's really bad. There's, there's just nothing there. Um, and it's funny how, yeah, it's fun. I don't know. With Sheik, I feel like Sheik is a character. Where she really makes you appreciate all the tools you have. Yeah. You know, you need it. You kind of need everything a lot of the time in a weird way. Yeah. I don't have a great answer to the question, but this reminds me of a conversation that like um, KJH had with me or someone. Um, like, how good is Fox without a shine? Without a shine. And he's, like, yeah. and he's like, still pretty good. Like, yeah. Yeah, Still, like maybe like high tier, like I don't know. It probably good. loses to like probably loses all the care all the like the high tier characters, but still like still a good character. So yeah, I don't know. KJ made Even it though, like yeah he KJ. I remember I think as part of this conversation, I think KJ made like a list of top Fox's top five moves, and I I, I remember Shine was actually I don't remember if it was I think it might have been in the top five. But it was like, you know, it was like, it wasn't. I, I remember this. It, it wasn't. wasn't. It wasn't. It was, it was like back air, like up tilt was up there, up smash was up there. I mean, Fox has a lot of good moves. <laughs> so, it, was, it, was, it was clickbait, though. There's, there's no. It's kind of clickbait. It's like, yeah. it's top five. It's top five. Yeah. It's, it's top, top five. five, but I, I think Fox can definitely get it done. Yeah. In a lot of matchups without Shine, he can, he can definitely make it work. I mean, he's got a, a great dash, and in a lot of matchups, he's got, you know, easy up throw combos. He's got up smash. It's like he can definitely make it work, but he yeah. loses a, a tool that he, you know, obviously he'd really like to have, I mean, uh, you know. Fox has like a lot of variety, like uh, I, I think. Like, yeah. He, like I like I, I, th I think like a lot of the there's like a misconception or something or like a meme where like, oh, shine is like this, like the best move in the game or like this unbeatable thing. But like. I think if you watch a lot of if you watch a lot of melee these days, he's using a lot of his he's using a lot of his good tools um, to play. And I, I think like I don't know, taking away shine is is taking away one of it. 
one of the moves, but it's not like I don't know. It it, it just seems like I, I I'm not I, I don't agree with you know, shine is like a broken, unbeatable like kind of thing. Right. What right. And that definitely used to be a common sentiment. Yeah. But I think we know more about the game now than we did back then. Uh Schwartz, Noah, did we how'd we do with the question? Yeah, was yeah. that what you're looking for? Um, your take was, by the way, I know you got into a debate about it. I guess closing oh, this out, I, I'm kind of never... curious what your, uh, what your take was in this. I didn't affair. really ever take a side. I mean, I think I, I kind of wonder what other characters might become viable in that world. But in the debate that happened, one person said or posited that the melee scene just wouldn't exist, that because there wouldn't be aggressive shine based spacey combos people would have stopped watching Melee, which I thought was a, oh, an extreme wow. I mean, take. Perfect Dark coming out definitely helped when we were in the Brawl days, I'll tell you that. I'm blind. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, It'd be yeah, different. We... It would be different for sure, but I mean, that's everything, man. I think that's like, I think there's so many little happy little accidents. You know, I don't know, Axe coming along and doing all this stuff with Pikachu. You know, obviously, like, HBox and Armada, like, representing their floaty, their respective floaties to the highest level. I think it all had an effect at the end yeah. of the day. So I, I don't think you could put it solely on the shine and the spaces. I think that's I unfair. I will tell you, though, I don't think any characters get better, uh, like, become more viable, because Marth and Sheik are still in the game, and they will make sure yeah. the characters do not go any farther. And it's actually funny because I think that the characters, like, the, okay, the weak characters that, like, lose to Fox, I don't think they do any better. Like, they're still, they still can't get around back air and dash dance. So, <laughs> like, it's not like, oh, Fox can't shine. If, if anything, like, the, the people they usually, like, the low tiers usually beat are, like, the mid, mid-level mid Foxes and Falcos, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's just fewer of those. <laughs> Yeah, they actually get kind of worse in that way, which is kind of funny. More sheiks. <laughs> yeah, more sheiks, more peaches. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of you out there listening, the next time you get frustrated with the Spacey for shining you, just remember that they can beat you even without that shine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll cheer yeah. everybody up. <laughs> yeah. That'll cheer everybody up. While you're enjoying the new Unranked, keep that in mind, everyone. That's right. Well, thank you for calling in. No, you have any shout outs you want to do? Uh, yeah, I want to shout out um, Team Combo, which just finished up, mm. led by Melee Sad Posts, uh, which just yes. finished season two, and I got um, appropriately last place. And Only I want to shout out. <laughs> um, I want to shout out Level One Melee, which is a weekly uh, beginner tournament on the West Coast. Mm. Those are uh, great. Run by Divine Senator Kelly. Uh, it's great. If you are new to Melee or starting out, I highly recommend joining. Shoutouts. Uh, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Take care. And it looks like we've got uh, one more caller here. That's right. Perplexed yeah. Sloth. What's up and uh, where are you calling in from today? What's your question for us? Uh oh, um, you did unmute, so we know you're there, but we cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, now I now can, hear, I can you. hear you. What's up? Awesome. I'm calling in from uh, calling in from Jersey City. Did Hell yeah, New Jersey? Jersey City. Shout out Jersey City. Yeah. Yes, Love sir. That. What's your question um, for us today? I, was, I had a question for Keizu, actually. Um, we saw a really solid peak showing in um, 2021. You know, Polish rose to the top 10 with a really dominant win over HBox at SWT. Um, you know, Triff, I highlighted yourself. You all looked really good in competition as well. My question is mainly, how has the peach meta developed since the Armada days? And are there any character matchups that have notably improved in Peach's favor? We did talk about Puff yeah. earlier, but I, you know, I'd certainly like to hear more about all the other ones. Yeah, um, yeah, we, we've talked about this briefly. I think uh, there has been a like new wave. There have been a lot more Peach styles that are prominent now, uh, 
primarily like primarily because there's a lot more top peach players not like top not like top five in the world peach players but there's a lot of like there's a lot more what there's like four peaches in the top 30 than like you know mm. it's in the top 100 there's probably like 10 peaches or something so um yeah. yeah a lot more a lot more peaches uh so from that a lot more styles i think like i, I think people like cop like, people will like you know look up to their local like local like hero um and you know play like them i know polish and lod like played in the same region so when polish was like up and coming uh they uh they looked uh they like i know they like studied lot a lot and you know got coaching from him so that's really cool um so a lot more of that play style a lot more double jumps a lot more Hyper floats. Hyper floating is when you get the little boost from the double jump and then float immediately. So you can kind of float like faster. Mm. And then like you can kind of like uh like trip up their spacing or like whatever. Um so a lot more of that. Um honestly, all like all like really like strange stuff to me. Like I, I'm more of like kind of like traditional player. I like use a lot of pages like um normal tools um so uh i think you're seeing a uh yeah so i think that's kind of the direction peach is moving um not really sure where it's going to go in the future um matchups that are different puff is better puff is better i, I mean we've seen like you said polish like took uh uh, sets off Hbox. A lot has taken sets off Hbox. I've taken Hbox game five. Man, Hbox just sucks. I guess. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, I think Marth is a little bit better. Um, when Armada play, like he didn't edge guard Marth at all. Like I don't think he knew how. Mm -hmm. But um, now the peaches are a lot better at it. Uh, so like what Armada would do before. I, I mean, PP, you know, you've played Armada with Marth, and I, I think. Your recovery strategy was very good. You just you um, just go low and then you up B, and if there's a turn up, you tech it, and then if it's a down air, you SDI down. Exactly. Solve. Exactly. And it and it worked like it worked all the time. So yeah, like I you did very well uh, against Armand in that matchup, and I think that's like one of the like that's a huge that's a huge thing in that matchup because then what he has to kill you off the side or like off the top, which is kind of crazy. Um, a lot more edge guarding now. You like now you can do like. Throw turn up down, grab ledge, a lot more grabbing ledge um, to like force Marth on stage, and then you get up, kind of push punish Marth like um, Foxwood. Uh, and then there's this new thing where you can like kind of do that setup where Marth up is on ledge, and you do neutral get up, and you like turn around up smash, and yeah. it kind of just kills Marth uh, immediately. Um, so that's that's really cool. I think the Marth matchups a lot better now uh fox is still hard i think Sheik is Sheik is impossible i've said this okay. before about another character but <laughs> i know yeah. i'm right this time <laughs> I know I'm right. um and then uh yeah so i think i think peach has a lot of peach has a lot of a lot of room to grow uh i don't really know where it's going in the future but uh she's looking very strong right now it's it's funny how um with Sheik, that was like one matchup if anything back in the day i think armada made it look doable or something yeah. like armada did well against cheeks and we we're like okay maybe that's one of the top tiers peach can actually get it done against um he still I guess struggled not. he still struggled. i guess not i mean he's yeah. he did yeah, yeah well yeah in, in, i mean in armada I, in armada terms he did no there yeah. was that summer where he played mute king like four times and he just like kept beating his chic and then uh i don't know people were he was saying or like people were saying like that matchup was even um yeah which and was i wild. think which, which is wild. wild yeah yeah right? i don't think uh i don't think that's the case anymore i think uh right. the sheiks have gotten a lot better armada mm. has struggled with a lot of like armada struggled with a lot of the sheiks right like i think uh since flop took a game off Armada with Sheik, he Armada actually hasn't taken the game back with in that matchup. Um and then he then Shroomed beat him 2-0. 
Uh, oh, she, oh, yeah. she, she, she first Peach and then reverse three and hold him immediately after Armada switch uh, to Fox. Um, Swedish also beat his Peach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then since that day, I don't think uh, Armada ever touched that matchup again. So I think a, a, lo- a lot right, of things yeah. are... A lot of things are really hard in that matchup, um, which is why logically I to me it's... that that always made sense. Logically yeah. to me that always made sense. I remember the old wisdom, or and Armada even would say this. And I, yeah, well, okay, this is less of a thing today. But back in the day when it was like when Europe was on PAL, uh, Armada would even I remember he would say that he thought Peach actually won in PAL. Obviously, Sheik doesn't have the down throw combos in PAL. Mm-hmm. And it was like, he was like, oh, it's like 55 45 in NTSC for Sheik, and then it's 45 55 in PAL. And I always mm-hmm. thought that was interesting, but I, I wonder if even that is true anymore because I don't know. Even the neutral, I, I feel like, is really good for Sheik, so I don't think yeah, she I've, needs the ground. I've, I've never played PAL, but I mean, yeah. down throw is huge. It makes a huge difference. It is huge, yeah. In the matchup. Um, I mean, off down throw at low percents, you get a lot. Like, you don't, like, you get, like, I mean, depending on DI, you get, like, down throw fair, and then if they're off stage, like, fair sends them at a, like, sends Peach at a ridiculous angle where you can get, like, relatively easy gimp opportunities with Sheik, because, um, you know, she's very good at edge guarding Peach. And then um, for kills, too. So I can kind of see, like, why Pal, it's, it can be difficult, because you can kind of spam shield. And just kind of be okay, like, yeah. And in, in uh, in NTSC, you, you just like can't shield that much. Mm. Yeah. Um, another matchup that I don't, I mean, I we've alluded to maybe once, but I, you know, that character has changed probably more than any other, um, since a little while ago, and that's Falcon. Um, do you how do you feel that's changed in the last few years? Because Peach oh, is also gone, improved. Uh, yeah. I think that's a lot better than uh, it used to be. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of... I think I think Armada was, like, pretty good at it. Like, pretty good against Falcon mm-hmm. before, but um, the rest of the Peaches just kind of sucked against Falcon. Just got... Um, just death comboed from grab. Death comboed from straight in air, straight up airs. Um, since then, uh, yeah, the matchup has changed. Uh... I think I think a lot of us are, you know, it's 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 one of my better matchups, and I think a lot of other players have gotten better against Falcon. Hmm. What's uh, what changed specifically? What what have you guys changed? Um, I started to, uh, I I think I just like kind of understood the character a little better. Um, I got a, I got some help from Drug Fox. Um, and I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's like. Falcon's actually, although he's very fast, he's like very reactable. Like he has to jump in the air mm-hmm. and then like and then do like a move that like, um, which takes like kind of a while to come out. Yeah. Um. So like even like even like jump Nair won't hit you, won't hit Peach if she's like dashing. Right. It'll just go over you. So you can kind of see the Nair out. You can shield, and then the second hit will hit your shield, and you power shield it every time you down smash. Um. Same thing with Stomp. Um, knee will like immediate short hop immediate knee will go over your head so like you can kind of dash dance in that weird range like kind of close to falcon like pretty safely and the only thing he can do is like grab you so i like to pl- the only thing yeah th- 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 that's unreactable i, th- I feel <laughs> um yeah but if he grabs i can't imagine that that goes well for you guys maybe at it, zero it, it's okay no it, it it doesn't go well so like grabs grabs huge but you can but it's. I think grab is a little risky because. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. Then you get close to Peach, and then she can down smash or down tilt attack. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then so I kind of like to play in that zone a lot, and like, I I I I I basically tell Falcon like, oh, I dare you to grab me. Mm. Um. And then you know, if he does, great, you win. You you have like really, you're really brave. But <laughs> uh, they should write a movie but, about that Falcon. Yeah, but the next time I'm gonna dash check you and then kill you. So. Mm. Um, uh, and then you gotta, every time you got hit, you have to, D, you have to DI it. You can react to getting hit by Nair and then just DI away mm-hmm. after you realize. And then yeah, so the second hit like, will hit you. It sounds like you guys have all really optimized where you want to stand. 
Um, we've understood the matchup a lot more, um, and even how to escape punishes more. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean that even though Falcons have improved, it sounds like you know the peach the peach understanding has just improved so much more. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I think so. A lot of it back in the day was uh, peach was like really just like the the first thing you have to get better at is. Uh, it's not getting zero to death at 30. Yeah. Like if, if you are, you're not winning. You're not, you're not ever going to win. So, uh, you know, live, like, take two uppers. It's okay. Live till high percent, and then you get a lot more value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if those were all the questions or not, but I tried to get a little more information out of you because we did get a targeted question here. How, how, how'd, uh, how'd Kalamazoo do there, Perplexed Sloth? Oh, it was great. Yeah, thank you. No, it was it was really interesting, particularly some of the chic talk. I didn't realize there was such a difference um, with Armada and the PAL version. Yeah, yeah. No, the PAL version very very different. Now, the down throw you can di out, and chic doesn't get a true follow up. Weaker up air as well with chic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. I mean, that's a great question. Glad we, glad we got to highlight some of the peach changes there. I was curious about some of that. The Falcon one especially was interesting to me. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for this question. Do you have any shout-outs for us on your way out today, Perplex Sloth? Uh, just shout-out to Mech. Love his positivity in the community and also just the community in general. I love seeing the support people are giving to the uh, Genesis tournament organizers. Yeah. yeah. Love that as well. Hey, wonderful shout-outs. And... Um, Thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Take care. Okay, so make sure you're thinking of that community voice because I'm going to give you, you know, an easy question. You can take as long as you want with it, but then you've got to ask something for the YouTube comments there, Keizu. Gotcha. Uh, real quick before, before uh, we throw you to that, um, I know that I don't know um exactly where you're located now but i know i believe you started in started playing melee competitively in michigan and then you moved to socal and i think there was a bit of a back and forth and so i think you know for maybe people that maybe have moved somewhere they're not sure about how to adjust to the scene or or the differences between regions um what was what was that kind of experience like were the people really different were the play styles really different um just how how was your experience kind of moving there? And is there any kind of takeaway you can give to anyone that might be there listening now? Yeah. Um, so I did start at Michigan. And then after uh, after college, I moved to NorCal. Uh, oh, apologies. Actually, yeah, I, I moved in with Toph. Um, okay, right, so right. In, yeah, in Michigan, I played uh, with, you know, a bunch of the Michigan Top Smashers, like uh, Duck, Prince Abu, KJH. Um, and then in NorCal, I moved in with Toph, and then we played a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I played with Ladandis, I played with Shroomed, um, and a lot of those guys, uh, NMW. Um, so I think adjusting, adjusting, it was relatively easy to find like people to play. Um, mm -hmm. since I lived with Toph, like he had a lot of connections already, um, and we would hold, we would host Smash Fest and we would go places. This is before Netplay, so um, yeah. we would, uh, yeah, we, we would. I, I would be able to play a lot of Smash and meet a lot, of, meet a lot of new people. Um, NorCal, I mean, it's just so much more densely populated. Um, it was, I think, in Michigan, like the Michigan was great. I think we had a lot of top players, but we weren't as deep as NorCal. Like I remember the. I like I think in Michigan I was like ranked like like second or like third or something. Um and then NorCal it was like a 20 man PR and I like and like I don't even know. Like I'm not even sure what I was ranked first. I was like I may have been like ranked like 14th and I was like Yeah, it was something I remember when you first moved there it was it was lower like that and Yeah, and I was you, like I remember you came up kind of quickly after that. Yeah, I I I did. I did. I was like if I, once I got like 14th, I was like pissed. I was like, <laughs> "This is like, <laughs> like Nor NorCal's pretty deep. There's like, there's a lot of people like, there's a lot of people there that can give you like, you know, kind of a scare um, mm -hmm. when you, you know, like even as a top player. Um, and you know, it's 
kind of it was like kind of weird to me because like when i'd enter a tournament in michigan i wouldn't really even like look at like the i wouldn't even look at the bracket i would kind of mm-hmm. look i'll kind of look in like winner semis and like see see like who if i have to play duck or like you have to play kjh or something right so um that was super different a lot more practice i got a lot sorry there's like so good there's like some something out there um a, a lot more a lot better practice i think i got i mean since everyone's a good player there's a lot of variety i played against uh great luigi's um there weren't mm. too many great sheiks uh in michigan so i got a lot of great sheik practice um foxes of course um yeah uh tournaments in norcal that was a little tricky i think um to- like i think it wasn't as active as michigan i think well mm. i think there were more tournaments in in norcal but not many not like everyone went like uh in michigan we do like kind of like a weekly or bi-weekly thing um and it was like it'd be like really cool because like the whole like literally like eight out of ten of the PR would be there. Oh and wow! It would just be mm-hmm. like it'd be crazy. Um, mm-hmm. In NorCal, I think uh, yeah, I think people talk about like the Bay Area as like this one entity, but I think it's more of like a collection of neighborhoods. Mm. Uh, after living here, uh, it's it's uh, so I think fewer people like or fewer like percentage of the pr like came so you might run into like a few people on the pr um in your like local locals and then like uh uh so like there wasn't as much of a motivation for like players to go i think Mm. and that was like i think that's like something that the norcal like scene struggles with it's like to find that like one like legendary local that like we can all go to like and i think that would be like super sick um like a sick addiction like th- we had that with the foundry i think um mm-hmm. so you know if that ever comes back um that would be super dope yeah that that was really the last time in my opinion um that we had a local that everyone went to well and like, I we almost... had, like... oh yeah go ahead i mean we had like some like really sick tournaments after that but they weren't consistent they were like gator games they were consistent and was... yes and there were the ones at there were some like big ones at like uh the UCSF uh, that was really like Genesis Red or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, uh, but like those are like once in a while. We don't have like bi weeklies that everyone comes to. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, for sure. And so, I mean, hopefully for you out there that are listening, you're interested in those contrasts. I mean, uh, one of the easiest things you can do is just be PR'd in your state. Then other people from those scenes will just show you around. That's the easy solution, right, Keizu? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not too hard. All right, perfect. Well, with that being said, uh, talked a lot about you, asked you a lot of questions, but now it's your turn to ask a question, Kalamazoo. Um, you've got one thing that you've got to ask, and that's the community voice, the question for the people listening out there on YouTube to respond to. We'll talk about it in the next episode next week. Uh, anything coming to mind that you want to ask? Yeah, my question is, if you have, if your, so if your favorite matchup to watch and your favorite matchup to play are different, what are they and like why? Uh, I think I'm pretty curious. Uh, That's a cool question because that, uh, I mean, so much of, you know, I mean, we have so many spectators, like an outsized number of spectators mm-hmm. in the community, but people might still play casually or, or you know, semi-competitively or whatever, right? So yeah. seeing, seeing how that compares, it, it, do they like playing the same matchups a lot? And if that's an issue or not, but if it's something different, yeah, that's, that's a cool question. I like that. Yeah, because I, I, I know, like, I think a lot of matchups in Melee are, like, more fun to play than watch. Um so I wonder. I want to see like what the like. I, I guess like contrast there is. Is there a matchup that you think people are going to say like a lot for? What they want to watch it but not play it, or play it but not watch it? Um, I would say probably 
uh, they love, like, I would say people, like, would love to watch or play or watch, uh, like, Falco matches, matchups, but I, I think some people, like, don't like playing Falco that much because Falco is um, a little more constricting to the other character and doesn't mm-hmm. allow you to play, like, as, like, fluidly. Something I've heard is people come in my chat and they'll say, I like watching insert uh, maybe strong Falco player or whatever, strong mm-hmm. Marth player play against this matchup because it makes me feel good because when I play it, I can't do anything. And so it makes me very happy to watch this character lose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not like my sense. I love watching Falco because like the, the combos he has are so cool and it's yeah. just kind of like very pleasing to the eye. It's very like... Uh, uh, what's the word called? Uh, satisfying. Mm. Yeah. Satisfying. Yeah, it's very satisfying to watch. Like you or Mango, like just like do like a clean like Falco combo, like a, into a downer and or into an F smash, and then <laughs> to take a take a fresh stock. It's yeah. more like at least it's. I think I I think it's more like. Um, but you wouldn't want to play satisfying. as Falco, is what you're saying. Play against Falco. Okay. I don't. I don't think it would. I. I don't think it's fun to play against Falco because you don't want to be the one getting combo, but you I like want to be the combo. one. Right? I yeah. don't want to be the one getting like narrated mm-hmm. down aired. Um, you know. Yeah, it a, does feel different. When low percent. To you. It does feel different. Yeah, it feels worse. Toph, if there is there is there a matchup you like watching but not playing, or playing but not watching? I love. Um, man. It's a good question. I I guess, you know, I guess for me, I don't really play any of the floaties. Um, I, I like out of the top tiers, I think my worst characters are like Puff and Peach mm-hmm. out of the high tiers and above. So for me, um, you know, I think it's really I think watching really good floaty players and I think it actually, you know, probably even the best example of this might even be Omsa. I can't play Yoshi at all. I think it's I think it's horrible. I can't yeah. move with that character. I can't jump out of shield. I'm just lost. I I hit shield and I roll around like a dummy and <laughs> I hope that I can like do the down smash thing out of the shield or something. Mm-hmm. But when I watch Amsa, you know, it's funny when I watch Amsa like I I feel like I've watched so much Amsa that I I actually can kind of put myself in his shoes almost a little bit. Like I kind of know what he might look for. So for me it's very fun to watch him because I'm like, "Ah, yes, this is what I would love to do if I could play Yoshi." <laughs> but I can't. Uh, so I, Yoshi, anything for me is a pretty obvious answer here. But I do love watching Omson. I, I also feel like him in particular. He's got like a new like every tournament. I feel like he's got some new answers to situations that he used to struggle with, and I think that's really fun to see. Um, and then yeah, certainly to a lesser degree, I think the other floaty top tier matchups are similar. Like I remember I was watching uh, like Polish Laud, and I was like, oh, this is actually really. Really, quite fascinating because they play so differently. But obviously, like I, dude, I don't, I don't want to play Peach at all. I can't play Peach at all. So <laughs> that's so interesting because I think yeah, that's uh, my answer. I think the Peach players would be like the complete opposite. They they would say like, "Oh, I love like playing the Peach Ditto." You but think so? Huh? It's not. Yeah, all all the Peach players love playing the Peach Ditto. Huh. But um, you know, I'm not sure if they like watching it as much. I, I don't like playing. Um, interesting or watching it so okay so there is a little bit of division there so I kind of want to see like I want to see if like you know maybe that's like a matchup that people like to play only or you know both yeah cool Um, I think that's a wonderful question I'll throw in one thing that I was thinking about that's a little bit different from what you guys have said and that would be uh, Falco Falcon but from Falcon's end I absolutely hate it as Falcon but Watching Falcons find a way to get around everything, I'm like, man, you go, dude. That joke is hard. So, and shout outs to those Falcon players that that soldier through that. Uh, yeah, very impressive. I know they, exactly uh, what you mean. They they've been doing. Pre- I feel like they've been doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of barriers are getting broken in that matchup. Um, Wizzy is taking Mango to Game Five. Mm-hmm. We're winning every time they play. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, none's been able to beat him. Uh, so I, you know. It's it's impressive what they've done. It's I, it's just cool to watch because that junk is hard, man. So, 
I but I do not like playing it from from Falcon's End. It is not fun. Uh, but yeah, that that would be mine. I think that you know that's just because it, it's. Just, I mean, I think there's a theme here, partly because a lot of the stuff that we you know, either the characters we don't play or whatever, it's it, it's just very difficult for us. So to watch it done well, I think is really satisfying. But it seems like there is some variance. So yeah, it's a cool question, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. But until then, I think that's going to wrap everything up here. Thank you so much, Toph, for joining. Thank you so much, Kalamazoo, for bringing your experience, your peach wisdom. Thank you all out there for watching and calling in. We will see you next week on Radio Melee.